Right, well in the last video you saw us dig in this trench. Um, the drainage pipe goes all the way to the wall now and it's being backfilled with gravel to protect the pipe. But I'm not going to be doing any work in here today. We're actually going to be working in the cottage. I've got to um, prepare the walls ready to paint because I want to get that done this week. So cue the title sequence and I'll meet you in there. Three years ago, me, my brother Billy and his fiance Gwendolyn took on the mammoth task of restoring this stunning French chateau. At first, it was just the three of us. But since then, the whole family has moved in to help bring this place back to its former glory. And not forgetting the newest family member, baby Ernest. We do everything ourselves, from fixing the leaky roof, managing the vast 60 acre estate, to restoring the grand interiors back to the way they were a hundred years ago. It's not always easy, but that's what makes life in a place like this interesting. My name's Michael, and I'm going to be showing you what it's like to live, work, and play at Chateau de la Bamignée. Right, so these are the walls. They've, um, they've had plasterboard put on them, and uh, obviously they've got nice insulation behind, um, which would keep the place nice and warm in the winter. Um, but obviously with the plasterboard, you have these joints, um, and they need to be sanded back um, before we can put the paint on. So today I'm going to be using a special tool which is designed for... Can you hear that? That's that baby jackdaw upstairs. It fell out of its nest and it f it's sort of wandering around upstairs but it's, it's almost ready to fledge. I, I left the window open upstairs so the mum can fly in and feed it but if you hear any scratching upstairs it's uh, you know what it is, it's a little baby bird. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to sand this off. Um, I've got some bits here where I've actually tested the paint. I love the colour. It's a bit dark um, but I think it'll make it quite cosy in here. Yeah, so I'm just going to get to work sanding this and show you what I do. Well, it's quite dusty work. Um, obviously, sanding off plaster is going to put dust everywhere. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff in here. I haven't got anywhere to put it. So what I'm going to do is leave it all here and I'm just going to put dust sheets over the whole kitchen, panelling, shelves, everything, so that um, it just keeps it a bit clean. I've got some strong duct tape, that should hold it up. Oh, it's dusty up here. Very dusty. Right. Well, I've just got to cover the one above the sink and I'm ready to work. something for you Bill. Do you, mean you could take this copper pan for me? Yeah. Ooh. A little fly in there, he's trapped. <laughs> I suppose I should cover that up. Sean polished it again for me and if he gets dirty he's gonna go mad. Right. Right, I've got a special tool for sanding this off because I assumed that you use sandpaper. Apparently not. You use one of these special tools. Uh, it's like a, a flat thing with a handle. You have this special, you, know, you can sort of see through it. I'm not sure exactly what it's made of. It's just like a, a mesh. It's like sandpaper, but it's got holes in it. There you go. Really simple. We had a really nice guy that came and stayed here who's actually a viewer from the channel and he makes these masks by hand, they're all hand stitched. He gave us quite a lot of them actually so I'm sure it won't mind if I use one for a bit of building work but there's no elastic so I can't try and struggle to do them up. Should keep the dust out of my lungs because there's going to be a lot of it. 
Oh, I'm trying to tie it around my hat. That's not going to work, is it? We need Sean. There's no banter today because I'm working alone. I'll try and be as animated as I can, but <laughs> when it's work, it's not that interesting. At least we're making progress. Who's that? Hello. Is it Sadie in France? Yes. I'm just doing the Standing. doing this, but yeah, but don't let Ernest come in because it's oh, really it's dusty. Really dusty in here, so yeah, breathe, breathing it all in. Right, Billy, your your new camera is going to get covered in dust. I think it's best if I just get on with this, and I'll show you a bit a bit more progress when it's happened. But for now, I'm going to get on with some work. That was hard work. Um, so I've done this entire wall, the whole front wall of the cottage now has been um, rubbed back. So it's all smooth, I've feathered all the joints. What I need is to go and find a ladder because I've got to get up and do the top. I wonder if dad's got one. Probably, he's got a lot of stuff in here. There must be one in here. Nope, no ladder. These aren't as neat as the ones next door. It's <laughs> a lot more work in here to do these joints, but yeah. So the ladder's not in here. What can I use? What about in here? Oh, here it is. That's probably a, all right, isn't it? Yeah, that's all I need. Perfect. I'm not going to use that one. Look, should I tell them what happened to this ladder? It's broken, right? Billy ran over it with the cherry picker. <laughs> Well, no, it, we were up on the roof. And it was just there. And it was, it was, on, the, it was on the grass. And um, we didn't have time to get, take the cherry picker all the way back down to the ground to, to then move the ladder to go all the way back up onto the roof because we were doing work. So I really thought, oh, well, I'll just dr drive close to it and I'll sort of nudge it out of the way. It just went bang under the wheels and it just broke. So. <laughs> but Dad doesn't like to throw anything away. So he just put some tape around it and he's still using it. It's a death trap. Well, if he falls off it, it's his own fault. <laughs> there we go. Right, so we'll start here. There. No, it's not very safe, but if I put it against the wall, it should be fine. Oh, it's not so bad up here. Hello, you back? Yeah. I'm uh, just getting a little bit of this plaster that's got stuck to the beam off. It's all been sanded all the way around the top. Um, I've had a bit of a vacuum clear up. It's a bit dusty still, but I think it's all right. Um, and I'm just about to start painting now. So what I thought is I'd start, I'll do this main wall here first, because that way we can get an idea of the colors like. But um, yeah, it's all been prepared. I mean, there might be a few little bits where there's plaster missing, but it, once it's painted, you'll see if it's obvious or not. And then if it is, I can get just a little tiny spatula and some pre pre-mixed plaster and just fill them and just pop a bit of extra paint over them, which is what I normally do. Sometimes these little bits, these imperfections, they disappear when you paint it and sometimes they show up even worse. So for now, let's get some paint. So I've got this amazing paint from Little Green and they haven't sponsored this video. I'm just, I bought this out of uh, my own money because I love it. Um, it is, um, it's a special National Trust colour that they've done. It's basically a replica colour from one of their National Trust properties in the UK. Um, and I've got it in an absolute matte emulsion finish, which is like a modern matte emulsion, like the formula, but it's extremely matte, which gives the look of an old distemper paint, which is what they used to use a long time ago. So it's super matte and it looks really nice. It kind of has a bit of almost velvety appearance so, 
I suppose I should open it really. The, given the tin, what I did is instead of stirring it, I actually get the tin and hold the lid on really tight and I just shake the tin for ages. And that seems to mix it really well. Let me just put this um, lid somewhere out of the way. It's not gonna make a mess. Put it in that little bag for now. And it can just sit on the windowsill. There we go. Right. Now, I'm not a fan of paint rollers. I hate the texture. I mean, obviously they're really easy to use, um, but I find you get this sort of stippled texture. I really, really don't like, especially with a thick paint like this, it's very, very thick. Um, so I like to do it the old fashioned way. I use a nice big wide brush um, and I get loads of paint on and I just go over everything. And I find it's just as quick as using a roller and you get a really nice flat finish. I really don't like rollers, um, so we're not gonna use one. So let's pour some of this paint out. There we go, we've got plenty in there. Um, I'm just gonna pop that to one side because um, I am gonna have to refill at some point. So if I just put it down there, put something over the top, to stop the dust getting in, and we can start painting. Right, let's see what this looks like. I mean, the color looked amazing in the shop. It looks amazing on photographs that I've seen online of places and people that have used the same colour. It's a little bit darker than the front door colour, but it's a very similar green. It's, um, it's got a sort of blue undertone and it looks really nice with the oak panelling and it also looks great with the blue. So let's have a whack of it on. But obviously it's paint, you know, it doesn't take long to repaint. If the colour isn't right, we just repaint it. I love this paint because it goes on pretty much one coat. I mean, look at that. There's so much pigment in this paint um, that you really very rarely need to put a second coat. Um, and obviously this paint is a lot more expensive than your standard DIY shop paint, but because you don't have to use as much, I don't think it costs any more actually. So here we go, look, look at that. I'm actually gonna, Bring the brush strokes up and down. Well, I'm gonna leave the edge a little bit because I need to cut in and maybe cork under that wood, but we'll get as close as we can for now. There we go. Actually, I could probably get right to the edge. There we go, look. Oh, it doesn't look like I'll need to recut in afterwards. I think that was enough. Easy. I've been decorating the chateau for so many years that I've got really, really good at painting. Um, I don't think this is any slower than using a roller, to be honest. And look, you get that really nice flat texture. Those brush marks will flatten out as it dries. Um, obviously the paint looks quite dark at the minute, but when it dries, it dries a bit lighter, this one, so. I mean, look at that, that's incredible really, isn't it? Like, that's one coat, seriously. Like most paints, uh, even expensive ones, I find that I have to do two coats. There's another brand, a uh, popular brand of paint. I'm not gonna name any names because that's not fair, but there's another popular brand of paint from the UK that does all these lovely vintage colors. Um, and I find when I use their emulsion, I have to do sometimes three coats and it costs a little bit more than this paint. So little green. You heard it here first, it's the best paint on the market, I think. Do you know what, another thing I love about this paint, it's so thick that if you get like little, sort of, there's some little tiny air bubbles in that plaster there, it's so thick that it actually will just fill them. Look, almost gone. So, it's brilliant. And actually, it reminds me of the old distemper style paints, because what they used to do is, um, distemper paint was sort of like a chalk um, and lime or, or, or whatever, with a sort of animal glue based binder. Um, and it, you, they used to put it on um, plastered walls and it would shrink as it dried and it would actually um, put tension on the plaster underneath and it would actually like close cracks and things like that. Whereas this paint does a really similar thing. so. Although Little Green do actually do a distemper, I think. I've never tried it. Um, 
but I like these paints because uh, these modern emulsions with that sort of matte finish because they're a bit more like you can wash this if you really need to. Um, their intelligent emulsion washes a lot easier, but yeah, you can wash it. Look at that, look. Perfect. Hello Billy. How's it going? Yeah, good. Good to be back in here. <laughs> so, uh, normally you're working for me this morning. Yeah. And Michael's not awake yet. No. It's still only early. It is. He had a late night, I think, editing. All right. Um, so I brought you in here. Okay. You've to get me in, To yeah. get things done. Okay, yeah. We're doing it ourselves, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> You know it's going to be really funny when he comes in here in a bit and he goes, what are you doing in here? Yeah. <laughs> and he sees all the panelling back on. Yeah, I think he's dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> he sees all his panelling back on and uh, yeah. All nice and, and straight. We've cleaned up. Yeah. 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 We've got, some, we've got some plans. We know what we're doing. Always helps, don't I'm it? not taking over. No. I'm just helping him. I'm just Guide. helping him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Perfect. All right, let's get this fixed up. Hello? Oh, you've caught us. Good morning. What happened in here? You've done it all for me. <laughs> <laughs> you put the panelling back up. Oh, that looks amazing. So, did it go back up all right? Yeah. Yeah? Sort of. Sort of? Bit of persuasion. Oh, right, is it a bit? Yeah. A little bit. A few boards that needed a bit, yeah. of, a bit of a push, but... The right screws sorted it out. And yeah, yeah, the screws that I got, were they, they, were they any good? That was perfect, yeah. Yeah, yeah. self-cutting, real good... Because uh... it, it said on the box that they're... I mean, I think it says on the box. Oh, they're here they are, look. Uh, it says on the box for... Essence de bois... Uh, right there. Shin. Uh, yeah, bois très... Uh, for, for hardwood, shen and exotic woods, yeah. So, oh, yeah, that's perfect. You've got the right ones. <laughs> You've got the right countersink bit. Oh, so you put some screws here then? Yeah, through the centre. Oh, that's, that's, that's awesome solid bottom. now. It's also fixed through the peg rail. Yeah. We've got two fixings in the bottom, two in the top. Yeah. And one all the way through in the middle. Oh, that's perfect. And some secret fixings that I won't tell you. Where they oh, really? Are. Yeah, because I can't even remember now. <laughs> what do you think of the paint colour? Lovely. It's dark, isn't it? But it's... Like it's not too dark. Well, when you've got the, I mean, the oak isn't dark itself, is it? No, it's quite reflective. And that light. bounces the light back yeah. onto the wood. And also, don't forget there'll be two, there'll be two more light fittings on this side, which yeah. will illuminate. And um, oh, lovely, is it a heritage colour? It is. I I looked it up, um, and it's it's from um, there's a, a national trust property in West Yorkshire. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. And there's um, there's a room in there, uh, and it was designed by Chippendale. Mm -hmm. Not any old and, paint here, uh, mate. <laughs> it's all done in sort of chinoiserie chin style, and there's exotic like Chinese ho ho birds. Yeah. Um, and the wallpaper um, that they they um, the hand painted wallpaper that Chippendale put up himself. Oh, I mean. Um, it's all foliage 
green leaves Lovely. and flowers, all in a Shinwaju style. And the um, and the green of the leaves, they copied it exactly. They used a spectrometer and they copied the green, um, and they called it Ho Ho Green after the Ho Ho birds. Mm. So it's called Ho Ho Green by Little Green. Well, you're um, saying every day. Yeah, and it's um, it's uh, yeah. I got it in the absolute matte, which has got more of a. It looks more sort of. It's more matte than a normal yeah. um, emulsion. Yeah, like if very, you feel it, it's, it looks very it's like period. Velvety. It's a bit velvety to look at. Yeah, yeah. That's kind oh, of lovely. Job well done. I'm pleased with that. Thank you. That's right, mate. And actually, they went back with less of a gap this time. Mm. Maybe they've expanded a bit and. Yep, they've yeah. settled. They've settled oh. down. Yeah, that's, not that's, that's fall on the edge. That's just for the film set. That. All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Clonk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What we're going to do is turn it up so this size it on the window, and that's at the top. Should we, should we explain what's going on first of all? You yeah, go on then, yeah, explain. The staircase, the staircase, the elephant in the room. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> I mean, look at look at the state of it. How wrong with that? It's all full of woodworm, full of woodworm. Oh, yeah. The problem is what's what's happening now is what I originally what I originally wanted to do was to have this wall plasterboarded, and then lots of viewers kept saying to me. Oh no, please leave the stone wall. It's made a lovely feature. It, it, it was a lovely feature, but look at the dust coming off of it. It's filthy. And it's uh, it's not hygienic to have dust constantly dropping off a wall in, the in, a, in, a, in a kitchen. Um, oh, someone's phone going on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the extras. Um, and it's not it's not a nice stone wall. It's not like a, it was designed to be seen. It's, it's a, just literally thrown together. Um, and it's got a hole here that's full of glide plaster where there's an old window and that's and I want I want a nice it looks quite dingy in this corner like an old cave and I don't want an old cave I want a nice cozy kitchen so we're going to do what the plan was originally we're going to plaster over this wall and paint it so it's nice and clean put wood panelling halfway up um, the only problem is the staircase is now not going to fit it's going to be too wide because the staircase only just fits in that gap once the plasterboard's on won't go back. Plus the staircase is rotten, the bottom part is missing, so I'm going to have a new staircase made from oak so it all matches the panelling that's here. So we need to get it out now, don't we? Yeah. What, are, what are you going to do with that, Dad? I'm going to use it downstairs in my cellar so I can access from in the winter. Yeah. When I want to get logs, I can go down inside into the cellar, get logs and back up again. Are you going to cut a hole in your floor? Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Do you reckon it'll fit in there? Yeah, perfect. I've measured it. Go in your basement then, fine. Yeah. Well, as long as it's not just going to get chucked away and burned, that's, that's no. great. And we'll, we'll get Paddy to make a brand new staircase. Yeah. Um, because even though we've got this staircase, if I had a new piece made for the bottom, which needs to happen anyway, it will never match the top. You'll have this old crusty bit and a nice new bit and that we'll get a new staircase. We've done this much so far, we might as well get a new staircase as well. So yeah, let's get rid of this. Is it going next door to yours now, or should we just leave no, it outside we'll for a we'll stand it outside for the time, then yeah? I'll put a sheet over it, because I've got to clear stuff to, and do the base in it first before yeah. I can put this in. But we'll stick it outside and I'll sheet it. Yeah. Just make sure there ain't no nails on there. So be careful, there is a lot of nails, but yeah, I pulled a lot of them out, but... Be careful. Uh, that's it, that's it. Right. Shall I go outside now? Yeah, yeah. Take it to outside. Oh, it's not that heavy, you know. No, Either that or I've been oh, yeah. working out. <laughs> we'll come out. Yeah. I've got the weight of it. It's not that heavy at all, really. No. It's all the woodworm. It's aerated. Oh, oh. It's an aerated. It's like a sponge. It's a space <laughs> it looks aid. solid, but it's not. Yeah. Where are we going with it? Going into the um, next door. Next door in the front of the house there. Right. Yep. Got it. Yep, I got it. Cue <laughs> the Lauren Hardy. I know music. how you felt with that table the other end. Yeah. <laughs> you're by yourself. Oh, anyway. it's payback now. Oh, it's payback. That's it. I'll go. Yeah. Oh, I'll rest it on the edge. Yeah, stick the youngest that in. Come round, Mark. It's your left. It's your right. Sorry. Alright. Good day. <laughs> I've just had to put under that shoulder, it's yeah. timber. The new staircase 
which um, I'm going to get Carpenter to make eventually. Well, I'm going to need it soon so we can get upstairs. Um, I'm going to get him to make it identical to that staircase. So you, you'd, you'd walk in, you'd think it was exactly the same one. Uh, so it's going to be replaced like for like. But it'll have to just be maybe five centimetres narrower than the original one, but you'll never notice. Although every time Sean says on camera, we'll cut that bit out, I'll go, I'll leave that in. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's offensive. <laughs> Uh, Sean sure doesn't say anything offensive. I try not to. <laughs> it's my uh, wit and humour. Sometimes it's I sail it's, close to the wind. <laughs> it's British humour. It I, I, I think a lot of people don't get it. They no. think we're being genuinely rude to each other. Yeah, I know. But in England, if you if you love someone or you like someone, you take the mickey out of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's just what highest we do. Highest form of flattery. Yeah. The highest form. Of, and the more you like someone, the worse it gets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pull your bloody finger and get a move on. You. <laughs> What is this your diagram? Doing dot to dot earlier, but I've got bored. So. Do, do you do these up on CAD? I'm going to put that on eBay. He is a CAD. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should sign it. You oh. should sign that, I'll frame that. <laughs> you want to put something behind me, Michael? I've got, I've got, I've got loads of notes, and I've got letters that people have sent me as well. All of that, it's all going behind a wall somewhere. But not just yet. We're not at that stage yet. But yeah, I did say that there was going to be a time capsule. Um, and actually, that's a good idea. If you want, I'll put my address on the um, on the link of this video. If you want to write a letter, that I won't open it, but it's going to go in the time capsule to go inside the cottage. If you want to write a little letter, a note for the future people that maybe put right our bad work. <laughs> <laughs> And send it, send it. I've got a question on I'll put, it. Yeah, I'll put the address How long did it take before it fell off the wall? No more gifts. Please don't send me any more gifts. I, I, people have been so kind. They send me such lovely things. I just haven't got room for anything anymore. Same goes for me. I'm absolutely full up with gifts now. <laughs> 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 send them to Sean instead. I mean, I've, got so much, I've got so much stuff. And honestly, there's boxes and boxes at Stephanie's that haven't been opened yet. And, and I've got all these lovely things. I'm, like, I'm now going to have to be choosing with a... Which which things get put in a box yeah. and which well, things get stay? I can see you building an extra extension on here just to put your gifts yeah. in. Yeah, I need to furnish another house. Would you reckon, Billy? Yeah. Right. Okay. We've got some measurements. We've got the fixings. So we cut the plasterboard, offer it up. Mm -hmm. What I've done, I've run the straight edge over, mm -hmm. so that we can get a good level on it because. Okay. The, the stringer of the stair will be coming up there, yeah. and your your eye will follow that up as you go up mm -hmm. the stair. So that needs to be dead level.